Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it looks like December is going to be very busy for Warhammer fans because we have something else to show you new today. This is Battle Sector, a really cool game that I've played many times on the channel before and has been receiving steady content updates over the time since it's been released. Well, a new DLC releases on the 13th of December, the Sisters of Battle, which are available in Skirmish, Multiplayer, the Planetary Supremacy Campaign, and finally the new Demonic Incursion Mode, which shows off some Demons of Corn too, so very much guessing that they're going to be the next playable faction. And what we're going to do here is we're going to jump into a Demonic Incursion Mode so we can kill two birds with one stone and just talk about all the new stuff that's coming in, because there's a lot of new stuff. If you haven't picked up this game before, honestly, it's got a really, really good story for the Blood Angels, like... The intro cinematic is absolutely amazing. The game overall is just quite fun, especially as they start adding more and more to it, because new modes and all that stuff, the devs seem very, very determined to make this the best possible game that they can. So I'm always quite interested just to follow up and see what they're doing, really. So what is Demonic Incursion? Demonic Incursion is a bit of a wave defense minigame where you're going to be throwing lots and lots of demons at you through multiple waves. These are all Cornate demons. You can actually see a really cool piece of artwork there. I really hope this is available to purchase on the Warhammer art store because it's actually pretty cool. And you can play that mode with either the Blood Angels, the Tyranids, the Necrons, or the Sisters of Battle. You already have a few pre-made armies there, and you can tailor it to how you want, so there's different difficulties, difficulty settings. I kind of like the idea of just having different types of armies, starting off with a larger one or going with a smaller one. Don't you worry, you can actually just work around it and you can make your own army composition if it's something that you just don't like. But um, it's pretty much a good way to start in as you go. When it comes to Sisters of Battle, you have access to 15 brand spanking new units. And the idea is that you can kind of mix and match. It's a pretty big roster and you've got pretty much anything that you kind of expect from the Sisters. So you've got some Rhinos, you do have the Walkers, you've got a little bit of everything and I kind of like it. It's quite varied. Honestly, that's a good thing that Battle Sector have always kind of done. They've always kind of pushed onto a little bit of variancy, so you have a little bit of fun with that. It's not just, oh, here is your generic stuff, and then it'll get filled out a little bit later. And it could be, anyway, in the future, but I already feel like there is enough troops for you to be able to have a really good experience. And I, I really am quite keen on that. My favorite personal units so far have been the Paragon Warsuits because they just look super cool. We'll be checking out some of the models as soon as we get into game anyway. But it's just kind of nice to have the variety. And they look great, which is a good thing about Battle Sector. All the units have always looked great. You can tell that they use references from the actual miniatures themselves. It's not just artwork. This is something that's been explored in their blogs before. And yeah, I'm a big fan of that. But yeah, so I've got the biggest army that I could have used and it's just the case of just wanting to get in because I want to fight some corny demons. I actually like demons of corn and the fact is that, uh, look, let's be honest, many devs overuse Nurgle, so finally getting a different demon to fight is just kind of fun. I must say that the scenery when it comes to demonic incursions is actually really, really cool. So you get some of the stuff that we've already seen in miniature form. I love when developers use the already established scenery pieces that you can buy from Games Workshop and put them in game because, yeah, I mean, you know, they're there, they exist, you might as well, and they look kind of cool, so why not? So yeah, we're in a corny area and you can expect loads of fire, brimstone, ash, all the usual stuff. I think that's awesome. You start off with your army being able to deploy them as you wish. You've got a small area of deployment though, very, very small. And it's the case of just being able to prepare for the worst. Because once this begins, you're going to start dealing with waves and waves of enemies. And you have to actually try and survive as long as you can. Which yeah, isn't too difficult if you know what you're doing. This is the first time that I'm using this army here. So obviously I'm going to struggle a bit. But anyways, let's look at the few models that we have access to. I didn't bring all 15. But you can already see the quality here, right? They look freaking awesome. There is just so much about this. I love the Sisters of Battle. I'm really happy that they got a quite visual overhaul, well, model updates mostly, when it came to 9th edition. Well, wasn't it at the end of 8th? Yeah, about the end of 8th, start of 9th. But it was pretty cool, right? It's an army that desperately needed a little update, and you can see that update here. 
it's awesome. The quality of this is just absolutely fantastic and it's just nice to see. And I believe that the developers are improving more and more as more DLC is being implemented. I'm really excited for the future. Like, it's almost clear that Corn will be next because this is a bit of a hint that they can do. So, um, it just kind of works like that where we had sisters and we were like, okay, sisters are next. Uh, we couldn't play as them, it was just we could fight against them. Well, you could with the Blood Angels for the story, but that's it. So they'll probably do demons next. There's a few demons, there's a decent amount of demons here that I'm not going to be showcasing all of it. There's going to be more videos hopefully in the future. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how everything goes. So when you actually begin everything, it's just the usual type of game style. So it's turn-based as you can imagine. You uh, start getting your demons arriving. There's a little counter there saying how many you have to eliminate. And you're going to be dealing with that. So you start like moving around your forces as soon as you can after the enemies have finished deploying and doing their first movements. Yeah, I kind of like the idea. Honestly, I, I like these endless types of things. You can make them endless, by the way. With this, it's only just eight waves. But uh, you can make it just like stay here forever as much as you want. Because there is a leaderboard for those who like leaderboard stuff. So yeah. Start moving your troops around, start doing as much as damage as you can, prepare anything that you can, get your overwatches going, because these demons can hit hard, keep in mind that hellblades and stuff can hit hard, and they can actually, um, they can hurt, they can hurt. There's been times where I've been playing, and yeah, I made a mistake and just got absolutely slaughtered. But remember that the Sisters of Battle aren't a long-range faction. They're mid to melee. That's where they excel because they're the Sisters of Battle. Flamers, you know, Fire and Fury. This is something that's very common with them. And the Flamers are... <laughs> the Flamers are very, very good. So you'd want to try and use them as much as possible. I've seen them being able to take out just whole units of blood letters without too much of an issue. So it's just the case of that. You can see here, I'm getting ready. I'm getting close. I am starting to move my troops. Keep in mind that I'm just doing one by one here just to kind of show how they move and stuff. But you can do the usual thing where you can just be quite quick at moving stuff. So it's not going to take that long. It's just depending on the players too. If you're slower at just mobilizing, your games will last longer essentially. The demons themselves look absolutely fantastic. I love the look of the blood letters. There's a little bit of a visual issue on one unit of blood letters, not on the others, which is kind of strange. Uh, but other than that, they look great. Like even the uh, the Blood Master looks super cool. The um, the Hounds look awesome. The Blood Letters in general just look cool. Like they look like the tabletop miniatures, and that's what you're expecting, right? Especially when it's a Warhammer game, you're expecting them to look like the tabletop miniatures, low representations and stuff. And I think they do it really, really well. I love seeing demons, and I really like Demons of Corn, interestingly enough. I know some people give me flack about it because Tanesh is my favorite god, but I actually legit like Demons of Corn. I've been painting a lot of Demons of Corn lately. They look good. The models aged well. Sure, they're old, but uh, I think they're okay. And as you start eliminating, you'll start to get extra waves. So here is the same mission. This is just a little few minutes forward where I killed off the blood letters. And here we go. We started to deal with some more flesh hounds, some blood crushers. Hell, there's even a skull cannon of corn hidden around there. And we have to start doing our damage as fast as possible because we need to get rid of them. And yeah, I, I like it. I honestly really enjoy this type of game mode. It does present a little bit of a challenge, but that's kind of expected. And really, that's kind of what we wanted, right? Again, this is something very drastically different while still keeping to the same gameplay. And I think it's a really good addition. It just brings in a little bit more life. So maybe you don't want to play a Planetary Supremacy or you've already done the Blood Angel story. Why not try this out? Right? And you can play it with any faction too. So when the mission ends, because it is per wave, you actually have a little bit of time to rest. Here you can get the uh, details, so you've killed 11 demons, there's three turns that took there. I did pick up a bonus, which you can find littered around the world, you'll get notice of that. And that gives me less points, then my score comes into effect, and then afterwards, my reinforcements. Because after this, I can go into another page, which we're going to talk about right now, and the idea is that you can then buy new troops. You've got extra score, so then you can fill out some roster a little bit more, depending on what you want. You can save them until later on, by the way. You can save them until later on, and it's all about just getting those points being used up to get some extra troops, to do some damage. Obviously, there are limits. You're not going to be doom stacking here, but as the missions carry on, they're going to get harder and you're going to want to have some better troops. You're going to want to switch around some stuff. 
And it's just, yeah, it's a pretty interesting system. I actually just really like this. And what I find very interesting, which is going to shape how you play this game, this is wave two, by the way, already coming back from getting the new troops. As you can see, my troops are in the same place that we finished the wave. They won't just reset in the middle, which a lot of games that do something similar just have you reset and redeploy. This is continuous. Despite the fact that you were able to get some reinforcements, you're still in the same time frame, right? You're still in the same area. Anything that you've moved has been moved and you can move them back because it's the start of a new turn. But this means, for example, where I had to go to the uh, east and then northeast, uh, sorry, northwest of the map. Now my enemies are in the southwest, which means that I've got my tanks exposed and I have to start dealing with those enemies that are getting closer. I have to start preparing deployment, getting everything going, as there's a decent amount of enemies. The second wave, I believe, spawned in a Bloodmaster who summoned in a unit or so of flesh hounds, a bunch of flesh hounds themselves, another scowl cannon, and a few blood crushers. So it's already getting a little bit tougher. I'm there just to do some damage and try to take out whatever I can from the very beginning. Given some thoughts regarding this, this is great. I absolutely love this, and I think it's a very very interesting take on a feature that we already know with endless hordes and stuff especially with a turn-based system it's definitely very very fun and yeah corn is a challenge corn is a challenge i think this new game mode is going to be tougher for the tyranids the sisters don't have too much of a problem i feel like the sisters are actually quite strong the space marines i haven't tried yet but the space marines were always like top tier and the necrons shouldn't really have too much of an issue yeah this is a good system i like the sisters i think that they're strong enough to be able to hold off their own especially here and if you're wondering where the reinforcements come from, they don't get deployed with you. So you actually get them appear a little bit later on. This, I think, was the next turn. And yeah, they will just have to join up, which can lead to some interesting things. You need to be able to regroup with your troops as fast as possible. So you don't want them to be, you know, pinned down by enemies should anything spawn up there or anything. I kind of like that. It's nice because it feels like they're coming in to reinforce you rather than you just setting up again and adding some extra troops. This is a pretty good system and I'm quite keen on it. Honestly, I'm liking this. I think this is a great step forward and uh, it's pretty nice that you've got so many options to play with. So you can actually play with the um, supremacy maps, right? So planetary supremacy, you can pick who you're fighting against. You can even fight against, say for example, the Blood Angels. That's a thing now. You can do fight against allies and I kind of like that. Again, it's allowing for more options Plus it's Warhammer 40k, everyone eventually fights anyway. This is not a fully fresh review, this is more like a first impressions type of video, but so far I've liked what I've seen and I'm hopeful for the future. Really, I'm looking forward to a potential demon spec because I prefer the chaos stuff, right? And they've got blood letters. I mean, it's either going to be blood letters or they're going to do like a world eaters thing, right? It just kind of makes sense. We're going to have to wait and see, but there's definitely a lot of potential for this game. There is definitely a lot of potential. The devs have proven time and time again that they are willing to add in more stuff and have more fun, and I think that's the most important thing. Though, with all that being said, what do you guys think about all this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. Apologies that the video is late today, I'm not so sure when it's going to be going live. Uh, I've had to be dealing with some stuff, like my mother had surgery, I'm taking care of her. Um, I'm not sleeping a lot. Let's just put it that way. I'm not sleeping a lot. But yeah, I'll see you all very, very soon. Have a good day.